Hello, and welcome to the Enhance Your Kafka Infrastructure with Fluvio webinar. I'm Grant Swanson, your host for today's session. We will start with a few educational slides on Kafka versus Fluvio, then go into a live demo, and then finish up with Q&A. Please enter questions anytime during the session in the questions window. In the handout section, you will see some of our newest content that includes a speaking session on WASM technology from our CTO, Seho Chang, at the most recent KubeCon event. We also have content in PDF format that includes a Java versus Rust solution brief, a financial services solution brief, a real-time economy white paper, an ebook on how to enhance machine learning models with real-time data pipelines, and an Infineon Cloud datasheet. Infineon Cloud is a fully managed Fluvio service for enterprises. Now we'll cover the agenda for this webinar, where we will discuss what are the differences between Kafka and Fluvio, why companies are leveraging Fluvio to complement Kafka, how to quickly get started with Fluvio, and then a live demo with Q&A. Let's talk about some of the differences between Kafka and Fluvio, starting with programming languages. Kafka was built over a decade ago using the Java programming language. Fluvio was recently built using the Rust programming language. Fluvio differentiates itself as a technology by providing real-time stream processing and data transformation using WebAssembly, all in a single unified cluster. Smart modules allow for programmable stream processing for clean data. We will dive deeper into smart module functionality in the upcoming slides. But first, we wanted to cover a recent POC that we just completed with a company that serves over 3,000 global banks that enables over 1.2 billion people to carry out their daily banking needs. In the POC, they did benchmark testing on Fluvio versus Kafka, and the results were outstanding. The, the performance improvements include up to a 3x latency improvement, up to 5x better throughput, up to 7x better CPU utilization, and up to 50x better memory utilization. Why companies are leveraging Fluvio to complement Kafka. The number one use case and reason why companies are leveraging Fluvio to enhance their Kafka infrastructure is to stream clean data to a Kafka topic. The data collection pipeline shown in the diagram starts with an HTTP service and a Fluvio HTTP source connector. Streaming data flows into the Kafka sync connector where smart module is applied. Smart modules are one of our premier features allowing users to have direct control over their streaming data by providing a programmable API for inline data transformation. Finally, the transform data event flows to the Kafka consumer. Users can quickly and easily stream clean data to Kafka with no external ETL tools. With stream processing and real-time transformation, companies can stream data from a sale, a shipment, or a trade, and perform any transformation that are needed before it syncs to an application or database. The two most common use cases are to build rich front-end customer experiences and real-time back-end operations. We believe that in the coming years, there will be a fundamental paradigm shift in data engineering 
where companies will move away from traditional extract, transform, and load, or ETL tools, to an STL infrastructure, or stream, transform, and load. The Infineon approach to intelligent data streaming includes a new concept called smart pipelines. Smart pipelines are unique to Infineon and include WebAssembly smart modules that can process and transform data with single digit millisecond latency. Business logic can be applied to ensure data quality. Smart modules can be deployed at source connectors, sync connectors, or within the stream processing unit, eliminating the need for ETL tools while providing a single solution with distributed intelligence and centralized control. Now we're gonna hand it over to Alex Mekaloff, our architect, and Sebastian Imlay, our principal engineer, for a live demo. Welcome, Alex and Sebastian. Thank you, Grant. Give me just one moment. I'll ha hand this over to you. There you go. It's all yours, Alex. Thank you. As a uh... Uh, Grant mentioned, uh, we are going to demonstrate the uh, Fluvio data processing pipeline, and uh, we are going to do it in two stages. Uh, the first one, uh, we go in a, via uh, HTTP connector connecting to FinHub API, uh, then populating Fluvio topic, and then via Kafka sync connector writing uh, uh, data into Kafka topic. And then we are going to expand it uh, by adding uh, aggregate smart modeler, uh, which will add a specific data transformation uh, into before uh, writing data into Kafka sync uh, connector. So the transformation will happen on the topic before data moves into Kafka. So as Grant uh, mentioned, uh, the Kafka will receive already clean data. And uh, uh, we are going to start from uh, installing uh, Fluvio uh, local cluster. So uh, this is a fresh uh, instance in EC2. And uh, what I'm going to do now is to install uh, Fluvio using our open source uh, uh, Fluvio cluster. So as you can see, it's downloading and installing pretty swiftly. So then we are going to start Fluvio cluster. This I need to add the Fluvio command to the path. Uh, so that's Fluvio local uh, cluster is uh, spinning up and installed uh, inside of the Minikube. So uh, that instance already had the Minikube installed, uh, but you can follow uh, our website for prerequisites. Um, so now I'm going to test uh, Fluvio cluster. So I'm going to uh, create a topic, topic uh, greetings. Then I'm going to uh, create a single message. Hello, Fluvio. Via uh, Fluvio produce command. So currently I'm using Fluvio CLI. And then I'm going to consume the greetings topic uh, again via Fluvio CLI. So um, as you have seen, it's quite straightforward. So we installed the Fluvio cluster and uh, um, we uh, created a, a topic called greetings we populated it and then we consumed it uh, from the beginning 
Now, uh, that instance already have a mini queue, yeah, and uh, uh, it also have a pre-installed um, uh, Kafka uh, local instance, which is a development instance. Uh, it's um, nothing uh, resembling to production, but uh, it's already have uh, uh, multiple topics populated. So uh, this is the uh, local Kafka cluster. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to uh, create an uh, HTTP connector, uh, which will read the uh, uh, Film Hub uh, API. Uh, and uh, that's going, I'm going to do it building up on the demo which Sebastian uh, already demonstrated uh, in the uh, previous webinar. So you can clone uh, our previous uh, webinar demo, but the idea is that you need to register on uh, PinHub uh, IO and obtain uh, API token. Uh, then uh, you need to create a configuration file, uh, which looks like this for uh, HTTP connector. As you can see, uh, that's the name of the connector. Uh, that's the type of the uh, uh, connector. Uh, this is a topic which uh, uh, is fluvial topic. Uh, the data will be uh, read. So also it says that it will create a topic uh, which if it doesn't exist, and then it will query the uh, API endpoint using get method for every three seconds. And uh, we have a, a make file which can uh, very conveniently demonstrate you how to run multiple commands. Uh, and uh, this one, we are going to uh, create a connector by a Fluvio connector create command. As you can see, it's quite straightforward. Fluvio connector create. Uh, and uh, now we're going to check. Uh, so the connector is running. And um, uh, uh, let's check that uh, uh, it is actually producing a uh, uh, topic. So I'm using Fluvia consume command, uh, again, matching uh, uh, topic name the uh, genie stocks. And uh, as you can see, that's populated uh, uh, the uh, stock data uh, every three seconds. So now uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to write uh, into Kafka cluster. So as I mentioned, I already have a Kafka cluster, which uh, we created uh, using Docker Compose. And uh, um, Docker Compose file is uh, provided with repo, which will be shared after the webinar. And the important point is uh, uh, that it have an uh, advertisement host, uh, which is matching the gateway for Minikube. So uh, our Fluvio cluster can actually connect uh, into uh, Kafka. So what we need to create first is the, uh, again, configuration file for Kafka. Uh, and uh, it looks pretty similar to Uh, HTTP connector, uh, except it's uh, uh, so name uh, type is Kafka scene, uh, picks up the data out of topic GME stock, and then writes it into Kafka process Fluvio topic. Uh, so uh, let's create a Kafka connector. Again, uh, checking that the Kafka connector is running. Uh, so, Fluvia connector logs command can uh, uh, help to debug if there are any issues um, with the uh, Kafka connector, uh, but uh, there are no issues so far. And uh, um, let's check if we actually populate in the Kafka um, topic. Uh, so um, 
And we are going to do it using uh, uh, Kafka console consumer, uh, which is available inside the Docker, which we're currently running on that server. So I'm going to change a uh, uh, topic. Um, this one uh, should be Kafka process loop leader. And uh, yeah, as we can see, every three minutes we are populating uh, Kafka. Every three seconds we are populating Kafka topic. Right. So. Uh, that was uh, basics introductions. Uh, so we have uh, created uh, two uh, connectors uh, in Fluvio uh, One is HTTP connector and another Kafka sync connector. So what we are going to do uh, next is uh, more interesting. Uh, so we are going to add a smart modeler and uh, uh, it is aggregate, it, it will perform the aggregate function. Uh, so uh, that smart modeler pretends that uh, we uh, purchase some stock uh, warrants and we are going to populate them using the text file warrants.txt and it will uh, reshape our tick options and try to calculate potential uh, profit and all loss. So what I'm going to do is again going to the uh, Bastion's demo and um, so that model is the um, um, Rust uh, is written in Rust and uh, uh, what we are going to do is uh, to uh, compile it into WebAssembly. And then we are going to upload WebAssembly into uh, Smart Modulus repository in local uh, Fluvio cluster. And uh, then we are going to uh, validate it and attach it to uh, uh, Kafka sync connector. So. Uh, again, there is a convenient make file which uh, uh, we will, which is already online. Uh, so that's uh, already applied. Um, we can do upload smart modeler. And uh, uh, as, as you can see, uh, those are just commands which are uh, pretty long, but uh, this make file on the wrapper for uh, Fluvio um, CLI. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to demonstrate that uh, uh, we now uploaded price for an aggregator. And um, uh, now we need to uh, produce warrants. Assume that we actually uh, make a purchase. Uh, and that is a very simple command, which again, uh, uses uh, Fluvio CLI to populate GMI stocks uh, topics. And uh, then we are going to check if actually uh, our smart modeler is working. Okay, that didn't work for me. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, when uh, smart model was uh, applied, uh, then uh, the shape changed and it also calculated in our uh, current profit, which is actually loss. So uh, if we bought, uh, if we potentially bought the stocks uh, at uh, 11th of April uh, at various purchase price, which is, uh, uh, then we probably at loss at this point in time. Uh, so what we are going to do next is uh, uh, we are going to deploy this smart modeler uh, so it will run uh, inside Kafka uh, sync uh, connector. And for that, 
we have uh, uh, the only thing we need to do is to add uh, that smart model plus uh, boron aggregate uh, uh, needs to be applied and it is an aggregate smart model. So what I'm going to do is again to create a Kafka connector. And you can see now we have a simple HTTP input, a simple HTTP source, and then we have two Kafka things. And uh, one of them uh, is running uh, div, uh, Devout Smart Modeler, and one, another of them is running Div Smart Modeler. So uh, let's read the Kafka uh, topic and validate that our Smart Modeler is aggregate function. So again, I'm reading uh, directly out using uh, Kafka uh, console consumer and uh, you can see it's currently zero. And the reason for it is uh, uh, that uh, smart model uh, and Kafka connector is applied at the reading state. So uh, what we need to do now is uh, uh, we need to uh, populate our warrants uh, uh, again because they're already uh, in the um, topic uh, when the connector uh, started reading uh, uh, records and applying the aggregate. So, uh, let's reduce warrants again. Now we are rerunning our Kafka connector. And as you can see, uh, the uh, aggregate smart model was applied and we currently have uh, current profits, which is actually a loss. So uh, to reiterate what we have demonstrated in such a short period of time, that uh, we are able to install Fluvio and we are able to create um, HTTP connector, which reads uh, uh, data into Fluvio topic, then applies uh, transformation, which is written in Rust and compiled into WebAssembly. Uh, it runs uh, before Kafka Sync writes it uh, into Kafka topic. And uh, that concludes the uh, live demo part, and we have now uh, can open floor to the questions. Awesome, Alex. Thank you so much. That was uh, pretty incredible that you got all that done in, in about 20 minutes. Um, so give me just one moment. I'm pulling up the questions from the audience. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to enter them into the questions window or even the chat box is fine. And I'm going to... Um, present my screen. Okay, great. We got one question that just came in here. So they are asking, uh, what other types of data transformation can be performed with Fluvio? So off the shelf, we have uh, uh, predefined templates for filter map, filter map, and array map, and aggregate uh, smart models. Uh, each of them applies uh, as described uh, uh, transformation, but you can put more and more complexity uh, depending on your Rust experience uh, into smart models. Awesome. Okay, we've got a couple more that are coming in here. So I'm just going to read the actual comment and the question here. It says, incredibly elegant architecture K8's native and connectors plus smart modules and WASM look like uh, this could be the building blocks of a universal streaming platform of the future. Are you planning on developing a high-level streaming framework a akin to Flink or Kafka streams on top? Um, I can talk about this. Uh, I'm Sebastian Emily. Uh, I'm a software engineer here. And um, 
Yeah, this is a high level strategy question. Um, we've discussed this type of thing for a little bit of like how to visualize various streams um, and like how to uh, have my more of a graphical interface for defining your Lego pieces that go into a, a, um, a data uh, aggregate and, you know, ETL of sorts. So it's definitely something that, that can be um, put higher on the roadmap should it be uh, needed. But uh, for now, it's um, in the backlog. Excellent. Thank you, Sebastian. Appreciate that. We've got a bunch more questions coming in here. Um, so the next question is, is, so this is, I guess, about a replacement. Um, do you have an opinion on when Kafka is suitable, a suitable candidate versus Fluvio? And, and I'm, like I said, I'm assuming that's a, a Kafka replacement for Fluvio, with Fluvio. Um, that's a tough one. It really depends on your use case. Like, um, we're not quite feature complete with respect to Kafka. Um, one of the things that I will say that's n nice compared to uh, Kafka is that we were able to deploy more easily. Um, in my experience, setting up a Kafka cluster is, is kind of a pain. Uh, so I would definitely say that if, if setting up uh, a Kafka cluster has been your friction, then Fluvio is a pretty nice um, thing to, to, to deploy. Um, and uh, we're not trying to be entirely com feature complete with respect to Kafka either because uh, Kafka, for example, doesn't have uh, the smart module features that we've uh, have shown here. Um, but I will admit that Kafka does have more connectors to various services because um, it's a much, the product has existed longer. So um, yeah. Yep, I, I agree with you, Sebastian. And I'll just add to that answer that um, we're, we're continually building out our, our connector catalog, um, but, but definitely Kafka's got uh, more options to choose from source and sync connectors. But as time goes on, we'll, 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 uh, we'll cover that gap, I believe. Okay, next question here. Um, when will Fluvio support windowing and processing windowed data? um that is a hard that's not a question i know off the top of my head it has been discussed um i can't give you a distinct timeline of this thing um i would have to discuss with our uh, our product um ceo and cto sao and aj more yep okay um, great so we'll, we'll respond to that question offline um and we'll move on to the next one so what are some of the limitations that fluvio might have that flink does not So hmm. go ahead, go ahead, Alex. Flink is uh, uh, more geared towards analytics, where Fluvio is more geared towards real-time streaming uh, as at the core, and then processing at that point in real-time streaming. So we are we are slightly for a different audience um, rather than for uh, like a replacement. So I don't see Fluvio being a replacement of Flink directly. Uh, and that's why uh, even uh, with uh, Kafka and the rest of the infrastructure, we probably will complement quite a lot of the existing tools uh, during various transition states uh, for organizations. And uh, as Sebastian said, we think about ourselves as a faster, easier to deploy, and uh, easier to manage. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we, we've got a number of questions coming in here, so um, we'll continue to answer them as long as we have time. We have about 10 minutes left in the webinar. Um, so the next question is, can the payload that Fluvio carries be binary? I'm thinking protocol buffers, et cetera. What are the types um example in kafka the client can handle the smarts about payload streaming and sizing so can the payload that fluvio carries be binary yes uh on a low level the actual payloads are all binary um the i think there was some discussion like you mentioned basically some kind of metadata around the payloads we don't quite have um typedness for the payloads just yet but you can 
building that on top of Fluvio streams isn't particularly hard. Um, yeah, so like there's no reason why you couldn't like say uh, put images or even video into a Fluvio stream. You just bundle your your frame of say a movie or you know a video into a given Fluvio record, which would be big. But um, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. So uh, in the case of mentioning gRPC, I think um, I think I have no reason to believe that you couldn't like put gRPC streams into Fluvio. Um, so yeah, it's binary and you can do this. It's uh, for the cases of metadata and typedness, you need to do it by convention rather than um, Fluvio type checking. So. Excellent. Next question. Um, does Fluvio have a way to deduplicate jobs to avoid modules processing the same record twice? Um, that has been a, a discussion we've um, been looking into. Uh, and the, the, right now, no. Um, but uh, having um, statefulness on the stream is an area of work um, we've been looking into and um, it is low on the, I mean, it's it's near on our roadmap. Um, and if the examples of this would be like resuming from an offset for a given um, consumer stream. Excellent. A uh, couple more questions here. Please keep asking uh, the audience. Uh, if, you, if you have more questions, um, please continue to enter them into the questions window. We have two left here. Um, the next one is likewise, what are some limitations that Flink has that Fluvio does not? Um, Alex, do you get this one? Uh, I think this one difficult to answer. What are the limitations of Flink? Uh, um, probably uh, people who are using Flink in production will uh, tell more. Uh, uh, so I think it's uh, uh, we are uh, as a uh, uh, Grant said we are a platform app starting platform. So we are building towards uh, connectors, uh, but uh, that's where if you already have a large infrastructure, then we can complement it. But if you're starting from greenfield development, then we probably will allow you to progress way faster than Apache Flink or Kafka. Um, to, to expand on that, I think one area that Flink um, probably lacks is, is the ability to do more um, edge nodes for Internet of Things devices, um, such as like running um, Blink on a Raspberry Pi. I, my hypothesis or my suspicion is that it would be difficult to deploy uh, Flink on edge nodes of, of a various infrastructure. Whereas Fluvio, we have a, a, an installation for Raspberry Pis. Should you want to like do some kind of IoT uh, thing? Um, so that's definitely an area that where I would say Flink is lacking. Excellent. Appreciate that answer, Sebastian. Uh, looks like we have about time for one more question, um, which just came in. And the question is, does Fluvio support any flavor of SQL or is it in the plans? Uh, yeah, I can talk about that. The uh, Right now, we support a very low level representation of Postgres, um, and it's mostly currently used for uh, CDC between two Postgres instances. Um, it is in the plans to expand this to do Postgres from Postgres to MySQL or um, vice versa. Um, it depends on on um, if if we if someone shows uh, interest in in one of these things, um, we would definitely love to to add it. So it is in the plans, but um, we'd love to make it a higher priority. I, I would expand in the way that. Uh, we would like to validate our connectors with use cases. So uh, if you think that uh, Fluvio can be useful for you in particular uh, and have a particular use case in mind, uh, I think that will be a really good opportunity for us uh, to validate our platform and for you to prototype uh, our use case. Excellent. Appreciate that, Alex. 
Um, so I w really appreciate the audience being so engaged and asking so many questions. Um, we're going to we're going to wrap this up with a few call to actions. Um, so it's very simple. If, if you're interested in, in signing up for Infineon Cloud, which is our fully managed Fluvio service, um, you can do that uh, at infineon.cloud slash sign up, um, or you can go to our homepage, infineon.com, and click try now. Um, we also have instructions on how to build a streaming app. Um, and then we can we also have um the ability for for anyone to schedule an event streaming processing demo and we're happy to engage with anyone in the audience if they're interested in testing out fluvio and getting a poc up and running um we'd be happy to engage with with everyone so at this time we're going to wrap this up and i appreciate everyone's engagement and thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day